Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill, and today I'm going to show you how to do a little framing. We're going to frame a partition wall. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a bottom plate and a single top plate. Now I'm going to show you some differences with a double top plate and when you would want to use that. But because we're doing a partition, all we need is a single top plate. So let me show you. Let's get started. Come on. Okay, so when you're framing, you have what's called a bottom plate or a sole plate. That's, that's going to be this here. And you have a top plate. That would be this piece of wood here. All right? So what you have between your top plate and your, your bottom plate or your sole plate are studs. And that's generally how a partition wall is created. It's just got a single top plate. Now, when a wall is load bearing, well, then you got to double up the top plate. So it's going to look something like this. Top plate is doubled. And it's doubled because it's carrying a load. Okay, so let me show you a real life example of what it looks like. Okay, so this is what they call double top plate construction. And it's a double plate because it's carrying a load. This is the joist above. And that's how you can tell whether or not a wall is load bearing. Because it's going to run perpendicular to the joist, okay? A partition wall, all right, which is what we're going to build today, actually, instead of running perpendicular to the joist, that's what this is. This is a joist here, okay? The plate runs parallel. It runs parallel with the joist because there, it's not carrying a load. It's just a partition. All right, so what do we have? We have our bottom plate and our top plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip them on the sides, just like this. And we're going to bring the two together, two plates together. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to take your tape measure, all right? And we're going to start at the end. We're going to build 16 inches on center. Typical. All right, so what does that really mean? You hear that a lot, stud center, 16 inches on center. I have my tape measure here, and notice how the 16 is marked in red. You'll find that a lot with tape measures, okay? They mark stud center for you with denoting the number in red. So I'm going to mark it with my, my pencil right there. And I'm going to just continue on down the, the piece of uh, lumber. Okay, so I'm, I've marked 32 now. I'm going to slide down. I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to go down to 48. Because 16 and 32, it makes 48. Come on in close. Let me show you. So the 48 is also denoted in red. Come down to the end of the plates. You'll notice that they're even. All right? And you want to make certain that your top plate and your bottom plate are, are even at the end. Now I come down to my first mark, and I'm going to take my speed square here, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike my line, just like this. So my, now my top plate and my bottom plate are marked for the stud, and I'm going to continue on down. This is where my next stud goes, because we, remember we marked it, okay? So I'm going to line up my speed square, and I'm going to strike my line. So here's the thing about a 2x4. 2x4 really isn't 2 inches by 4 inches. It's really 1 and a half inches wide. And so the center of a 2x4 isn't 1 inch, because it's not really 2 inches wide. It's really 3 quarters of an inch. That's the center of a 2x4. So I'm going to mark that for you. So this is just for demonstration purposes. You wouldn't do this with every stud. I'm doing it so you can see actually how it's, how it's laid out, okay? What stud center really means. So 16 inches on center really means it's not the distance between each stud, okay? 16 inches on center means from the center of one stud to the center of the next is 16 inches. Okay, so now we're going to start attaching our pieces of wood and I'm going to build a little, a short wall for demonstration purposes. So here's our short wall. It's a visual and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down flat 
I'm going to run a tape measure across so you can see where it's 16 on center. Okay, now, now what we'll do is we'll span the length of it. Let's start at the very front. Okay, and if you come across, we notice the center of the stud, 16. And we're going to move on down. Let's move on down the tape measure here. The next stud, 32. Let's keep going. The next stud, 48. Okay, so we're going to move on. I'm going to frame up on an actual project that I'm doing. Now, it's not a wall that's as wide as the demo wall that I've shown you. And I've done a demo because I wanted to show you really how 16 inches on center works. And I think you got a pretty good idea of how it works. Now we're going to frame up, okay? What you're going to need is you're going to need, come on in close because I want to show you the nail. This is a 16 penny nail and you're going to want this for framing. So don't forget your eye protection. Have a good hammer handy and a level. Now there may be a temptation to use a shorter level like a torpedo level, but I gotta tell you when it comes to framing, the longer the level, the better and more accurate the read. So I've got my bottom plate here and I've got it braced up against a wall and that's going to help me when I start driving in the nails. Okay, so now the second thing you want to do is once you've got it braced up against something is you actually want to stand on the wood. So you want to stand on your top plate. Make sure your foot is on the top plate and on the stud. It's going to keep everything nice and square, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to tip the nail up slightly toward you. It's going to make it easier for you to drive that nail. So that's the first one, and then I'm going to drive a, the second nail here. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going for that center stud now. I'm going to put my full weight on it. I'm going to put my foot on the top plate. That's, that's this here. That's the top. And the stud here. I want to make sure that it's lined up pretty good. It is. It it's lined up nice. And now I'm going to start driving my nail. Okay, so we're moving right along here. I've got my line, my chalk line struck. That's where I'm going to lay my bottom plate. I'm going to set this up. Now, this is what I want to say. This framing, it gets very, very heavy. And so if you were to build any larger than this, you definitely would need someone to assist you to put it in place. But such, because this is such a small wall, I'll be able to do it myself. Okay, so it's lined right up with my, my chalk line. And this is very important. When you frame up, when you frame up and you're not framing in place, because you can frame two different ways. You can frame up like I showed you, or you can run your bottom plate and your top plate and then build your wall in place. There's two ways you can do it. We've framed up. And now we've set our wall in place and I've set it right on the line. So here's the thing. I've got my bottom plate lined up with the chalk line. And now I'm just going to tip it in the place. Now, what you have to keep in mind is a structure is longer diagonally than it is up and down. So just account for a little space up here. You know, subtract half an inch so that when you tip it into place, you'll be able to clear. Well, we're going to have to shim it, and let me tell you why. We've got a little bit of a gap here at the top, okay? You want to have a nice snug fit when you start nailing it into place. So what you want to do is you want to put a shim in. You want to put your shims in at the top, the top plate, or you want to put your shims in at the bottom plate. Whatever is going to be easier for you. Okay, and I want to show you how that's done. Now let me show you what a shim looks like. So these are shims, all right? And if you notice, it's like a wedge, like a, like a piece of cheese. You think of a cheese wedge, all right? And it's thicker at the top and it narrows as you get to the bottom. Well, when you shim a structure, okay, when you're shimming, what you want to do is you want to come from both sides of the, the plate and you want to slowly tap the sides in. Okay, so we've got our shims here. Remember I said you, you want to come from both sides, right? Well, I've got them in place, right? So now I just got to give it a little tap. 
going to tap each side because I want to snug it up. Snug it up again. Snug it up. I want to make certain that my frame is nice and solid, and it is. It's solidly in place now because those shims have elevated it. Now, before you start attaching anything to anything, just make certain that it's plumb, okay? Up and down, it's plumb, okay? And you put your level on there, and it's looking nice. It looks nice. You may have to tap it a little bit if it isn't quite plumb, and you also want to check the front here as well and make sure that's plumb as well and it is. I hope you can get a good read because a little bit of a mark there. Okay so there's our, our shims there right? Our shims and it's nice and tight and I got to tell you it's dead on straight ready to go. Now what I'll do is I'll nail that in place because it's all straight. I'll nail it in place and then you'll have to cut the cut the shims off and using a utility knife is good. Now that everything is plumb, and remember that plumb is up and down, it's vertical level is, of course, horizontal. So once everything is plumb and it's shimmed in and you like where it is, it's time to attach the side, the top plate, and the bottom plate. And you want to use those same 16 um, penny nails. So that's it. Our wall is up. It's nice and solid. This is Leah saying you, you can do this. See you next time.